This video will go through slab on ground in the SLB software. Initially, we will look through some slides looking at the theory. So we'll look at the Winkler model, source structure interaction and piles and how they're treated in the software. Then we'll go to the SLB software, see how we input soil properties and view the results for slab on ground. Uh, here's a slide of some typical soil properties, also available in the manual that we can use when we input um, properties into the software. So this picture, we have a quick evaluation of the soil pressures on some buildings. So we have uniformly distributed load from the upper floors and we assume an average soil pressure rectangularly distributed on the, uh, on the soil itself. Now, this is a simplified approach and not entirely accurate. So if we're using this assumption, we, we use the Winkler model to model the uh, basically the slab on ground. So what the Winkler model is, the, uh, the support provided by the soil is represented by springs. And basically this provides uniform settlements across the entire length of the um, basic of the slab, the slab sitting on the ground. Now this is not an this is not an accurate representation of what's happening in reality. It's simplified and not entirely accurate. Going back to the previous example, what's happening in reality is we have these higher stresses around the edges of the slab. So we have basically the very stiff building. If we imagine going through cutting through the softer soil, we will see peak stresses al along the edges and then lower stresses sort of at the middle of the span. How we model this in the software, we use soil structure interaction. So we have some stiffness matrix of the structure above, we have a stiffness matrix of the structure below, and then we combine these matrices in the software and model the soil structure interaction. And we use a basically a stress distribution on a uh, basically a linear elastic half space. So we evaluate the stress, we evaluate the strain, we integrate the strain over the depth to get the settlement. So theoretically, this is very simple, and it will produce sound and reliable results considering the soil as an elastic material. We ignore plasticity, and we also ignore things like consolidation and clays. We we don't model that. So if you want to consider those things, just factor in that um, results could be in the range of plus minus 30% for, uh, for clays. Other considerations for soil structure interaction. Um, basically, we have to consider the differences between the RCB software, the 3D RCB software, and the SLB software, which just models the slab plate. So RCB being on the left, we've modeled the full structure and uh, imagine that bottom floor is cast in situ concrete walls tied in with the slab, tied in with the slab above. Um, basically, the RCB software is modeling the stiffness matrix of the entire structure sitting above and how it interacts with the soil below. The picture on the right is just a simple raft slab as modeled in SLB. Uh, the red point loads may be the correct reactions coming from above. However, the um, Basically, we only have the stiffness matrix of the slab itself in the SLB software. So essentially, it's a little bit softer in the SLB software in this example um, and more simplified. So just something to consider. Other effects that should be considered that are considered uh, when we use soil structure interaction are the effects of the stiffness of the soil. So if we have stiff soil on the left, we can imagine the settlement wouldn't be significant. Whereas if we had flexible soil, we can see that the middle support is dropping down and we're seeing a redistribution of the bending moment. So the peak values drop uh, at the top and the positive, the positive values increase at mid span. And next looking at piles, there's a few ways that we can model piles. We can model point bearing piles shown on the left and friction piles on the right. So if we're modeling point bearing piles and bearing piles, we can simply model uh, basically the piles as columns and the slab it supports as a suspended slab and not have to worry about modeling the soil at all. With friction piles, we, uh, we put in the, basically we put in the pile properties and some initial settlement resistance as well. 
So a summary of the different ways we can model. We can model the slab on ground using the Spring-Winkler model or soil structure interaction in a linear elastic half space. Uh, we can model piles sitting on rocks, so essentially a suspended slab, or uh, basically floating friction piles. So uh, some we can see here modeled as some spring support at the pile location. And here's a 3D view of the piles modeled in the RCB software, just for illustration. And on the right here, we have pile caps modeled. So they're modeled defined using geometry lines, and we have the columns above and uh, the piles supporting them below. And we won't show it in this video, but how we input pile properties is in the SLB software, we hit soil properties, we select columns as piles, hit pile types, and then we put in some um, loading and settlement here as well. I'll go into the SLB software, we'll see how we model slab on ground in SLB. So we have to have mesh, which we already have. We've run the analysis, so just pressing Shift E to show the mesh. And with the mesh created, we, can, we go to soil properties and we hit slab on ground. So here we have the three different options, or two options really, how to model the soil structure into, or how to model slab on ground. We have the Winkler model. So basically, Winkler model uniform K means that all of the soil will have the same stiffness. Winkler model K by slab type so we can change the stiffness per slab zone. So let's imagine if we segmented this slab zone into different, uh, let's say three or four different segments, we could give each of them a different type and then put in a different stiffness per slab type. So that's one option. But we choose the most accurate soil structure interaction in, linear, in the linear elastic half space. Hitting soil layers, we put in our various soil layers and then the program will calculate the stiffness matrix for us. So we've just put in some values here and we've chosen to make it level. We can also input that at a slope if we desired as well. So we'll hit cancel because we've already run the analysis. Make sure that we have some service load defined so that we can view our results. We run the analysis which we've done already and to view our pressures, we go to results and soil pressure. So we can display again the results with colors or contours. And if we press around the side, we can see we're getting the peak, we're getting the peak pressure around the edge of the slab and we are getting some smaller value in the middle. So for the service load case. So all fully considered. Other things that we consider with the slab on ground. So currently everything is set to soil contact as yes. We can color by soil contact. If we wanted to have basically partially suspended, partially slab on ground, we would define a geometry line and then set soil contact to no. And finally, one more thing to consider when modeling in the um, in the inductor software modeling <coughs> modeling uh, any sort of slab on ground in the inductor software is we do not consider uh, basically we do not consider tension in the soil so here we just have some rectangular slab on ground with some very high point load and what we're looking at if we go to the service load combination and then go to the soil pressures is that we do not consider essentially negative um, negative tension in the soil. The program is producing the negative results for us, but it basically we don't have tension-free soil. So what we have to do in this case is we have to draw geometry lines wrapping around these areas with the red dots and then set their soil contact to no. So the program doesn't do that for us automatically. So if we hit escape, just to redraw, we would just put something in, for example, like so. Re 
mesh and then set soil contact to no in these areas. So color by soil contact, no on the edges, hit F6 to run again. And we look at the soil pressures. So it's just along these finite element edges, which we can ignore just a single point, but um, we're not getting the that. Basically, the these edges are free to lift up. We have zero pressure here. There's no um, there's no contact with the soil, so there'll be a more accurate pressure distribution in the middle of the slab. Other settings as they relate to slab on ground in the material properties. When we um, basically depending on depending on the type of slab on ground we are designing, we may want to consider MXY when designing the reinforcement, so the twisting. And the other thing, the moment distribution should always be set to off. So there's no supports. Essentially, the entire slab has support underneath it, so there should be no moment redistribution. And when this is set to none, the positive M limit times 2 is not doing anything. So in summary, what we looked at, there's two main ways we can model the slab on ground in the inductor software. The less accurate Winkler model, which assumes uh, basically springs are supporting the slab, or the much more accurate soil structure interaction. So considering the interaction of the stiffness matrix of the structure with the stiffness matrix of the soil supporting it below. Other things to consider as well, other things to remember, is that the inductor software does not include tension-free soil. It's up to the user to look at the soil pressure, see if there's any tension occurring, and then cut out those areas from um, the slab using geometry lines and then set their soil contact to no. This concludes this video. Thank you for watching.